It's before you go, Bobby, and we'll see you later on today. Looking forward to that. Um, the production crew of an Englishman and Irishman uh, in Portugal are meeting this lunchtime, which will be great fun, and we'll talk more about uh, future episodes. Um, what do you make, then, of the new uh, politics, the new parliament, the new prime minister? Any impact for you? Uh, and how is confidence in, in Portugal in terms of um, investors coming in? Has, has it changed anything? Um, it has Let's say there's optimism um, with regards to what's coming rather than what was happening. Yeah. Stability is the main thing. I don't know how stable it's going to be, et cetera, and so on. So, like, there's a lot still remains to be seen. But there is um, investors definitely looking at Portugal, mainly because of the opportunity with the housing side of it, because there's such a, a lack of housing. Um, so, from an investor point of view, um, there's still opportunity from an investment point of view but i think that this government should be able to latch on to the appetite and the demand and be yeah. able to put in hopefully some kind of tax incentives or credits or some kinds of incentives and probably reduce the vat or whatever it might be to make housing affordable um in the areas that's required and basically incentivize similar to the golden visa for people to invest into public housing and to add into incentivize the uh, developers and and speed up the planning processes, which they've, they've sort of said they've done, but to be honest with you, when you read between the lines, it's still a little bit um, unclear, let's say. Um, so there's a couple of issues still to line out, but I'm optimistic. Oh, that's optimistic. good. That's good. Rather yeah, because than, yeah. yeah, the talk of another election seems to have quietened down. They've been sworn in, um, yeah. and they, they, they seem to have a, some sort of workable formula that they've come to. So, yeah, the talk of a, another election seems to have diffused and disappeared. And we'll see. Are any of the parties talking in the way that you've just talked there with those sorts of strategies? Or is it too early? They, do they need to get no, their feet? There, the was, there was. I had read a couple of reports um, that it, it was already been talked about. I think it could have been part of manifestos, etc. Yeah. that they were looking at to reopen the golden visa, but they were very open to, as in for, for reasons of trying to help in areas that they needed help, which yes. for me was always what made sense. Yeah. But not to do it in a way that focuses um, investors to have to do this to get that. That doesn't work. Yes. And it has to make sense at the end of the day for the investor, or it doesn't make sense at all to anybody, but it also has to make sense for, for the government program as well. So hopefully to get the balance right and not make a mess of it like the last crowd, because they made a mess of it by trying to turn it into a 280, a 350. Uh, you can't do that here, you have to do it there. And then basically, just, Guys who came into the market cheaply started creating product for that rather than creating. So a house that was a hundred thousand, hundred and forty thousand in Ever or whatever it was outside in uh, outside Lisbon, all of a sudden became two hundred eighty thousand because right, the yeah, to satisfy, yeah, right, to satisfy the, the, yeah, that was ridiculous, wasn't it? But it was you, stupid. you knew that was going to happen, right? If, I mean, anyone I, who thought about it could see that was going to happen. I stopped doing it straight away. Yeah. The minute yeah. you change from you can invest into whatever you want to invest in. And that's why I'm doing my D2. My D2 basically allows people not even to do property. They can do a company to do absolutely anything they want. And they can operate that company as they want and still get a residency and so can their family and so on. So it's um, for me, it actually it's a lot clearer. The one thing I'm worried about is that once the program starts to wrench up again, um, I'm worried about the embassies and the uh, let's say, um, the hours that they work and the amount of volume of people that might look to do it and the bottleneck that will become the bureaucracy again to yeah. slow it down. Because the Golden Visa was a fantastic idea. The problem was they didn't implement the, the processes properly. Uh, they weren't ready for it. And then it became a political thing. And then you had an investigation, which found out nothing happened, but it stalled for years. Right now, yeah. people in the Golden Visa program are waiting, I have people, three years, three years waiting for the, uh, the application to be processed, which is yeah. a joke. And you well, can't I, do it. I, yeah, I remember we, we had a conversation about this. And I, when I wrote my article about Shaga, <clears throat> you know, excuse me, I was saying that's not the biggest problem in for foreigners the biggest problem for foreigners is, is their administration not not yeah. the political temperature around them um and i don't think any polit any politician is going to be shaking that tree are they what 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 political capital is there in a politician saying we've got to get this sorted out none of them are going to be saying that are they 
Well, this is where it takes bravery and it takes somebody that, and, and is there there? I don't know. It takes someone who's going to be brave to basic, and they will be fallen under sword because it won't be popular within right. circles, etc. as well, but it's for the good of the country and it's yeah. the good of, of what is required. Um, like if they keep just uh, humming along to the same tune, uh, nothing's going to change. So, yeah. um, Well, actually, it's it going to get worse. To if, if there's no intervention into the processes with the volume of people, all of those processes are just going to get more choked up, aren't they, and, and more delayed because P Portugal is still popular and more people yeah. want to come. But if they don't improve the services at the consulates, the embassies and at IMA, that, yeah. that's, that's going to be the biggest problem for foreigners, actually getting here and then having their processes dealt with in, in an efficient manner. So that's that's where the worry is. They can create this fantastic problem, but we already have a history of incompetence as a process mm -hmm. um, within within the system. So they need whatever pro uh, programs to put together and hopefully for the right reasons and in the right way, structure-wise, but also have the backup. Because it's not as if they don't have enough civil servants, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just making them actually do what they need to do to train them up and to... Yes. It's ridiculous when you have a family that goes to IMA or CEF and there's nobody else there and they'll take one person. The whole family's after traveling from whatever country and no, you'll have to come back another time to do your kids or whatever it is. That to me is ridiculous, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's somebody there and first of all, speaks perfect good English, but um, doesn't want to speak to you in English as well, which is fine. They can get a Portuguese translator. I just think there's an unhelpful part that needs to to gain a, a little bit more, what's the word, um, user friendly when it comes to these. Yeah, yeah and, and it doesn't serve any. That that sort of inefficiency and inconvenience doesn't serve anybody, does it? And if 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 the beef of I guess of the of the offices is like you know we we need people to know that this is an important process, and we're gonna we're gonna flex our muscles. That could be done in a different way, couldn't it? If, if, if you know, if, if there's more that's required to, to, to make it more of a significant process, then maybe have some language and culture modules to, 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 to show what a great country and culture this is to come to, rather than flexing administrative muscles like that and inconveniencing people. I don't think that helps. No, 100%. But uh, the first thing that you learn in, a, in, in uh, when you join the company and you're the one answering the phone, you're the first person that... that is going to interact with with, yes. a, with a customer or a client or whatever it might yeah. be. They're taught how to deal with that customer, that client, because first impressions last. Yeah, right. And so when you've got people like me and others that are going around the world selling Portugal for all the amazing things that it yeah. has, we all know what they are. We don't have to go over them. But then when you hit a sort of a, a wall on the other side after, you know, it's a bit like you're, you're selling them a, a pig and a poke. Yeah, right. Sense. Yep, it's a, it's a, that's right. Yep, that that so, first impression will last, and it's not a good one to beginning be beginning with. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. I'll see you at lunchtime. Just a final thought. Then uh, we're asking what politicians might do. Maybe they can muzzle the archaeologists. My house was held up for a solid year by an archaeologist. That sounds like a really strong archaeologist. <laughs> five, five years. Really. In the end, they found some dishes that had been broken in 1925. Well, it was all worth it in the end, and an old oven. Five years. I was going to ask you on that note, how's things going at Herdad de Mayo? No archaeological holdings there, I hope. It's Absolutely what? Fine. Oh, have good. Set the villas out of the ground by, I'd say, in the next three months. All of them, all the construction with regards to the concrete and steel is, is well underway. It'll be finished, I'd say, three, four months. And then basically start. It's, it's really starting to look good. It's... Um, how would you say, like mushroom is popping up now in the field, you know, like Excellent. You know, oh, good great. for you. We'd great yeah, to see it happen. Please send some pictures. We'd love to see that. Yeah, we um, will. And you've been tracked down by JP in a good way, I hope. Uh, Bobby, I just sent you a LinkedIn connection request. That's JP in Porto. Watch out for that. And Frank Nibley agrees. Target rich environment for developing customer fo focused processes and to remove waste. There is something to go at, certainly in the admin of moving to Portugal there. Well spotted, Frank. Uh, Bobby, see you later. Thanks for being here. Much appreciated. Right, guys, and keep up that great work. Great job. Seven seven kilos, did you say? In, in... those five weeks. How amazing. Well done. <laughs> See you later. Touch up. There he goes. And uh, we'll keep the applause going for the doc. Well, hey, there he is. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs>